Welcome to Financial Plan and Explain, and I'm your host, Mike Menninger, Certified Financial Planner, Founder and Owner of Menninger & Associates Financial Planning. I'm pleased to have uh, joining me today as a co-host, Kyle Ryan, uh, one of my senior more advisors, uh, who is also a CFP as well as a Chartered Financial Consultant. Kyle, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today, uh, a popular demand, uh, one of the things is that uh, if you look at our website, uh, we've had... You know, we can monitor the website, and there's been just an enormous amount of traffic uh, taking a look at uh, what's called PACERS, uh, which is the Pennsylvania um, Public School Employee Retirement System for Pennsylvania. And since it's by popular demand, we never had a TV show on it. We figured, okay, let's do it. And, you know, just in, in looking through it, we see that this is going to take two weeks. This is going to be a two-week episode because we don't want to go blitzing through it. Um, the other thing, too, is that we're going to use this as sort of a foundation to also talk about how other pension plans work, because there are a lot of similarities between pension plans, but most notably, we want to talk about the Pennsylvania school plan. So, so if you look at financial planning, I mean, again, our, our uh, TV show is designed to be providing an educational experience for the viewers and to the extent possible that we can make it uh, entertaining, you know, beautiful. Um, but anyway, so it, really we talked about the six areas of financial planning. Six areas of financial planning are cash management, tax management, risk management, um, investment management, or sorry, investment planning, retirement planning, and estate planning. And the pensions really get into your whole retirement planning. So uh, with no further ado, let's get rolling here. Yep. So the, the PACERS, again, it's the public... <laughs> Public School Employee Retirement System. <laughs> Amazing. I can't, it's right in front of me, right? So, uh, and I should point out um, that there are also, this serves as a similar program for all state employees, okay? It could be uh, police officers, it could be the teachers, it could be uh, PennDOT, you know, I refer to them as shovel operators or whatever the case may be. It's all state employees, and I got a little thing for you. I don't know if you know this or not. A uh, handful of years ago, I have to say, do you know who was the highest paid Pennsylvania employee? Uh, Joe Pa. Ah, you knew that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, he worked for Penn State. He was the head coach of Penn State football. Uh, sadly, he died a number of years ago, but he was the um, highest paid employee of Pennsylvania. Yep. So it just goes to show it's a public school. So um, it, it's all part of the whole program. And namely, who this would really impact, you see it most, but it's not it's limited to, it's the teachers, right? right? It's at universities, high schools, and such. Correct. You know? yep. Correct. And so it's the public teachers. And so one thing I can say is in our travels, uh, you know, we've met plenty of people and, you know, have encountered plenty of retirement plans. Yep. You know, I've seen UPS, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, um, Pfizer, Wyeth, which was formerly... Or Pfizer is formerly Wyeth, the U.S. government, um, IBM, GE. I, I, I could just go down the list. Those are the only ones that I'm thinking about. And I will tell you, of all of the, the retirement plans that I've ever seen, by far the richest one was Pacers. Yep. And so what made it, I don't know what made it, but the the give you a little bit of the history of Pacers. Pacers has been around for a while. And I think it was around 2001, they changed the method of calculation. And they actually made it richer. So what they did is instead of my contributing 6%, you know, let's say I'm an employee, instead of my contributing 6% and get a 2% pension, they stepped it up by 25%. They went from 6 to seven and a half, which is a 25% increase, yeah. and then from two to two and a half. Yep. Well, we're gonna go through the uh, formula in a bit, but it's amazing how it impacted certain, and I had one client, it worked perfectly for it. So let's talk about the formula and we'll get into that. So the formula for their pension, and, and most pensions pretty much work the same way. Yep. They have three factors that go in, and specifically with Peachers, is it's the number of years of service times two and a half percent times final average salary, yep. okay? 
And it, just to give you an example, if you happen to have a teacher that has 20 years of experience, you multiply that by two and a half percent, makes it 50 percent. And if their final average salary was one hundred thousand dollars, then their pension is 50 percent of one hundred thousand dollars. That's fifty thousand dollars a year. Yep. OK, not a bad gig. Not at all. All right. No. And in fact, I also demonstrated that if a person has worked for 33 years, they actually make more money retiring than they do continuing. Than they do work. working. Yep. That's funny. Yeah, in 33 years, it's remarkable because you know, for a lot of people who get their teaching job right out of college, let's say, you know, they're age 12, 23. Yeah. 20, you know, 33 years later, they're 56 years old. Yep. They're retiring, making more money. That's you know, it's funny, and it's not part of this, but um, you know, Dave Ramsey recently came out. And he said the number one profession that he that the most common profession to become a millionaire is a teacher. It's because of the, the school system and how they really, um, they almost, it's not a force, but they really entice you to contribute to these pensions. And over the years, you stay there for that long, it's, it's a good way. Oh, they accumulate. They accumulate a lot of benefit. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Yep. And it's a very, very rich. So let's look at what goes into the formula and some of the definitions that they use. Specifically, FAS is a term that you use, and what we're going to also talk about, and it's probably not going to show up until the second episode, is what we're going to do is we're going to break out uh, a sample statement, uh, a, a statement that everyone from Pacers, you know, again, all the teachers, typically receive it somewhere around September, yep. October. The um, Pennsylvania's fiscal budget is July 1st to June 30th. Yep. Okay, and so what they do is they take that data and then they formulate it to provide the pension statement to all of the employees. Again, they get it in September, October. Okay, but we're going to show that statement and what it looks like because there's pieces, parts that honestly are very confusing if you don't really know what you're looking at. Yep. Okay, so going back to the definitions, you got the final average salary is by definition, it is the three consecutive highest paid years of your income, which in 99% of the cases are your final three years, yes. right? Because you're working all these years and it's your final three years of salary. And even just cu touching on that, you know, you hear it all the time, teachers in their last couple of years, you know, they might pick up, you know, they're, they're picking up schools, they're picking up coaching, they're just trying to do anything they can for uh, those last three years to jack up that final right. average salary. So now I got to tell you the story of the client that I had. So in this particular instance, um, First of all, the, the rules changed in 2001, they changed again in 2011, and they also changed again recently, and they added a couple other things, which we'll talk about later. But what they did is she had worked probably 25 to 30 years as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Then she got promoted to a principal, okay. and then superintendent. Not bad. Taken down over two hundred thousand dollars a year, right at the time that they flipped it from two percent to two and a half percent. She happened to work three years as a superintendent. Yep. And retired. Yep. So effectively, what she had was thirty years times two and a half percent times two hundred thousand. Her pension was knocking on the door of twelve thousand dollars a month. It yep. doesn't matter what you were paid on an average throughout all those years uh, of working, just your final three years, that's the basis of what you'll get paid for the rest of your life. Right, which then raises sort of the question, if you will, and we'll talk about pensions as a whole. We'll step away from Pacers for one moment, but um, some quick stats for you. If you looked at the top 100 companies in the United States, in 1995, 87 of them had pensions, mm -hmm. okay? And then all of a sudden companies are realizing, hey, you know what, this is a liability on the books. People are living longer. By 2000, only 50 companies had pensions. And by 2005, only 17 out of the top 100 companies had pensions anymore. Yep. And so they were kind of dying on the vine. Companies are like, hey, we don't want to do this anymore. Well, ironically, with Pennsylvania, they made their pension richer. And then all of a sudden, what happened is that they had all these promises that they were going to, you know, basically they have to take the money, put it in some type of investment to create this pool of money so that when people retire, they pay them a salary, right? Mm -hmm. A pension. Yep. Well, what happened was 2008 came along. As we all know what happened in 2008, the markets lost over 50% of their value 
And now the Pennsylvania Pension Fund was substantially underfunded. Yep. And then now they're paying a fat rich pension. And all of a sudden in 2011, it's like, whoa, yeah, we, we gotta, gotta change this. <laughs> we gotta change this, you know? Yep. But meanwhile, anybody in the old pension was sitting here on this fat plan. Because they got grandfathered in. Yes, they got grandfathered in. The same thing with the person who went from two to two and a half. Yep. All right, they forgot to consult with me. I would have done is said, all right, all your years you get times 2% and then however many years times two and a half because you are contributing to the pension accordingly. Yeah. You know, so she contributed to the pension at 2% for 25 years and it only at, I'm sorry, contributing at 6% for 25 years and then only contributing at seven and a half for just a few. She got the whole thing as if. Yeah, now, now hypothetically, say I started working in 2010 before they had changed the rules. Yep. Would all of my contributions since I was grandfathered into that 2010 before they changed it, would they all have worked that way? Or once they changed it? No, I well, the thing is, is in 2010, yeah. it was already at the new rule. Yep. Uh, the, new, the, the newer of the rules. <laughs> after okay. 2001. <laughs> it was the, after the 2001 rules yes. where they made it richer. Yes. Okay. So if I started within that period before they took some of it away in 2011, would I have just carried it on? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you grandfathered in. Yep. Great question. So all those people who are there, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit when they have the TC, TD, TE, and, you know, someone asked me, well, what do these acronyms mean? And I want, you know what, I have no idea if it's even an acronym. It's just <laughs> what they call it, okay? So anyway, going back to that slide. So you got final average salary. They take the average of your final three years, okay? Years of service. Well, you know, it's the number of years of service. Now, they do, if you started, let's say, in uh, a July and then you retired in a May, then you may have, you know, 10.8 years yes. or 20.8 years or whatever the case may be. And they take it all the way down to the second decimal point. Yep. The multiplier is a fixed 2.5%, okay, except now that since they changed it and made it less rich, now there's choices. You can go to the 2.5 or the 2. We'll talk about that later. Yep. Uh, normal retirement is also something where you had the old rules, the intermediate rules, and now there's newer rules yet because of the fact that it was so fat and rich and they had to pay our back. We're going to talk about that in a little while as well. And then the last piece, which I think is super nifty, is the purchase of service. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't see it that often, but we have a few clients that did. So in one particular case, you know, we had a client who had, I don't know, 20 years in Pennsylvania. But she also had four years in Florida and one year in Ohio. And what happened here, now mind you, there were 25 years ago. And really important is we're talking today about PEACERS, which is the Pennsylvania. That's correct. Now, the, each different state will have their own different retirement plan. That is correct. That is correct. And, and there has to be a, um, a reciprocal arrangement. Yes. But most states have it. Okay. And I believe... You could buy it from military, I'm not positive on that, but certainly uh, teacher pensions from other states can be purchased. Yeah. So here's the irony of it. So again, we'll talk about the fact that, you know, I have to make a seven and a half percent of my salary goes towards the pension. The, the, the state is also contributing, but remember, it's my seven and a half percent that's going to it. So what they do is they go back to the beginning and they look at my salary. So let's say for instance, I came out of college you know, 30 years ago and I'm making $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm spending seven and a half percent. They look at that seven and a half percent of 20 grand, it's 1500 bucks, okay? So if I was doing that for five years, what happens is that they go back and calculate that I was contributing $1,500 a year for five years. And then they put that into a pot that grows as a loan at 4% per year. Yep. Well, the irony of it is that now I added five years to my pension. Yep. And using that calculation that we did just a few moments ago, where my final average salary was 100,000, yep. I add five years to that, yep. that's $12,500 per year. It probably cost me maybe $15,000 to buy those credits. Yeah, I think that's a trade-off I'd take. Uh, yeah, it's a trade-off, that's right, exactly. <laughs> and how does that loan get paid back? So it's a great question. So, um, and, and we'll see it on the statement. However, I think our, our statement that we have does not actually have it on there. But what happens is at the end, I have the ability to, let's say that the loan is 20,000 for argument's sake. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to say, hey, here, stroke a check for 20,000 or it continues as a loan that goes against my pension, 
or it could continue and go against a rollover piece, the contribution and interest piece that I have for myself. Yes. Yeah, and we can dive more into that when we're looking at the example too. Exactly, so yeah. this is actually a perfect opportunity to take a, a quick break. So uh, stay tuned, we'll be back with you in just a few moments and we'll be right back, thank you. Do you keep up regularly with your investments? Where exactly are your hard earned dollars going? Are you financially prepared for an emergency? I'm Mike Manager, founder of Manager & Associates Financial Planning. We believe that education and knowledge are powerful and we want our clients to understand why we are making the recommendations that we make. It's your money and you deserve to know where it's going because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. So call us today to discuss your financial concerns. Welcome back to Financial Planning Explained, and I'm your host, Mike Menninger, and I'm with Kyle Ryan, and we're picking up where we left off talking about PCERS. Again, that's the Public School Employer Retirement System, which I fumbled with about three times in the beginning. <laughs> uh, you know, we deal with this all the time. Uh, again, this is backed by popular demand, and uh, we saw that there is enough information here that we're going to spread this out over two episodes. Uh, in the first episode, we were kind of talking about pension. I'm sorry, the first segment, uh, we were talking a little bit about pensions as a whole, uh, kind of how PCERS is calculated. And the calculation of PCERS is pretty simple in that uh, it's the number of years that you have of service uh, times 2.5% times your final average salary, which the final average salary is the average of your last three years working, times number of years times 2.5%. We're going to spend more time next week discussing exactly how these come into play but what we would like to do is differentiate between the different plans that exist um, based upon when you got in, okay? And so let's go with it. So first one is, as they refer to, I refer to it as the old plan, okay? TC and TD, I would tell you, don't even worry about what TC and TD are. They're the old plan, all right? So what it is is, as I pointed out in the first segment of the episode, it used to be that you contributed, and this is prior to 2001, you contributed 6% to the plan. Your multiplier on your pension was 2%, right? Two is one third of six. Then they said, hey, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the amount of money that you contribute to the plan to 7.5%, and one third of 7.5 is 2.5, so it increased what your payout was, all right? And we also gave an example of someone who capitalized on that in a big way because most of the time was spent under the 2% at a lower salary and then the last three years as a superintendent making over 200 grand gets 2.5% times the entire, I was sweet deal. I was just like, you know, every once in a while you come up with the ideal, holy smokes, this works out perfectly. Well, that was one of them. Yep. So let's talk about the old plan, okay? So the old plan, as I pointed out in 2001, flipped to what it is now where it was, you're contributing 7.5%, and when you retire, your multiplier is 2.5% times the number of years. Yep. All right. Now, what they also did is, with the newer plans, is they tinkered with your retirement age. Okay, in other words, you know, it's kind of the old thing that they're doing with Social Security, which Social Security is like a pension, right? Yep. So what they do is they're tinkering with the plan to make it so that it's not as rich because they realize that they don't have, it's underfunded. So they're trying to make up for it with all the new people, but the old people are still sitting on the fat rich plan, yeah. right? So what happens is under the old plan, your retirement is, full retirement is considered 
age 60, if you have 30 years of service, or age 62 if you have at least one, but that's kind of weird because you need five years to be considered vested in the plan. <laughs> I, don't ask me why the ruling of that. But, and then the other one is 35 years regardless of age. All right, so then they also have early retirement, which we have a, a joint client who fit that perfectly. She hit 35 right when she turned 55. And oh, by the way, we were talking about this before the show, she bought four years or five. Yes. Okay, four yeah. from Florida, one from Ohio yep. to get her to the 25 years, which hit right at her 55th birthday. Yep. Okay, which basically made her eligible to take the early retirement, which also has a much shallower penalty for early withdrawals. Okay, okay it's yep. 5% per year. So what her full retirement would have been at age 60, yep. she was able to pull it at age 55. And only a 5% penalty. Per, per year, 25%. Okay, yep. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. so anyway, so that's what's used to calculate under the old plan, okay? And again, if you bought years of service, you're just adding to your number of years of service, which is a beautiful thing. And for those of you who aren't aware of it, I am telling you, I have not found it ever to be anything other than hugely beneficial yeah. to buy years of service. Yep. Okay. You know, it, it, it works most of the time, but obviously you want to check with your financial advisor or check with your folks from Peacers. However, one thing I can tell you about the folks from Peacers. I am passing no judgment on them, but their role is to be hands-off, yep. informative only. They cannot and will not provide any recommendations. Mm -hmm. They'll only provide you with how it works, what the rules are, what your choices are, and how it goes from there. Yeah, because right. while it works the majority of the time, the answer to every financial planning question it depends. It depends. Right? There's, that is there's correct. There's always a scenario where it might not work out. That is correct. I mean, I haven't found one yet. <laughs> yeah, but, that's <laughs> but, fair. That's yeah, fair. but you also don't run into all that often uh, people who have years of service in other correct. states. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. Whenever I meet someone, like, hey, you know, what do you do? I'm a teacher. Ooh. With Pacers? Yeah. Because, actually, I should point out that Pacers is, again, public school. So many teachers may work for the Catholic archdiocese or uh, private schools, they're not covered by the plan. Correct. Okay. Um, and you also have to be a full-time employee to be covered by the plan. But um, I always ask them, so, oh, Peacers? Yeah. Did you start before 2011? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. shoot. And they have you no know? idea why. They're like, you know, what do you mean? Like, oh, <laughs> you know. It would have been better. <laughs> or if they <laughs> say yes, it. like, oh, awesome, yeah. you got it. And, yeah. and I, think, I think Ryan's fiance started like right after 2011. I'm like, ah, oh, uh, you know, could have, woulda. Yeah, could have, woulda, <laughs> shoulda, right? So let's take a look at what the next plan came out with is instead of TCTD, they came out with TETF, okay? And then TG, by the way, was just recent. And when I say just recent, I think 22, yeah. I think is when it came out. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about TE because this is where they made the change, okay? And you can keep this slide up. So where they made the change, let's go back and think about what happened with TC. TC and TD gave you 7.5%. I'm sorry, you had to contribute 7.5%, but you got 2.5%. Two two yep. All right, now, if you want to contribute 7.5%, you only get 2%. You can put up... To two percent more, right? So you can right. put it up to nine and a half, but that that multiplier difference is a it, it makes Absolutely. a huge difference at the and end. And by day. the way, that two percent more is not your choice. What it is is they're taking some of the risk off themselves. What they're doing is they're doing calculations based on how the markets did. Okay. Yep. So if the markets did crummy, then what they're going to say is, hey, you know what? You need to make up for us. In other words, they're de-risking their pension. They're de-risking their pension by saying, hey, you know, we got smoked in 2008 yep. because it ate away all of the money that we had in the pension for all these people. Now what they're doing is they're passing some of the risk on to the employee in the pension, which, by the way, I applaud a little bit. <laughs> now, that's the TE. They also give you the ability to say, hey, wait a minute. You know what? I would like to be on the 2.5% plan. Yep. 
It's like, okay, well, that's a 25% increase. Guess what? It's, a, it's an increase in how much you have to pay into the plan. Yep. So instead of paying 7.5% into the plan, you're now paying 10.3% into the plan. And once again, the state is bearing or sharing some of the risk and putting some of the risk onto yep. the participant. Yep. The next thing about it, more on it, is that the contributions on oh, here we go. Um, they changed the retirement dates, as we talked about. Yes. Okay. They extended when you can retire, much like Social Security. The full, full retirement age for Social Security, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, was age 65. Then they bumped it to 66, and now it's 67. That's their way of preserving the pot of money that they have for the pension. So, next slide, please. So, with this, the the retirement dates instead of being age 60 or 62 now it's age 65 yep. okay and or they could say 30 years of service plus your age uh, equaling 92 well heck 35 means if i started at say age 25 i get 35 years in i'm 60 yep 60 plus 35 is 90 that you yep, almost yep. have to work till your 60s that's it, correct yep. okay so as whereas can, in the other one there was a pretty it was it was a nice way to retire by the age of 55 that is correct that 20. is correct so what yep. they're doing is they're basically saying hey look we're trying to reduce the number of people who are dipping into the pot not to mention if you're retiring at age 55 if i gave you a uh, mortality age of say 85 yep. well they're only paying you for 30 years as opposed to 40 Yes. Or 20 years instead of 30. Yep. Okay, so what they're doing, again, is that they're trying to uh, preserve the amount of money that they have in the pension plan on behalf of all the participants because the plan was too fat and rich before. Yep. Right? And I don't know, uh, TE and TF are the, the parts of the plan that came out in 2011. That is correct. I'm not entirely sure when TG came out, but you can see even here that it's even pushed it further than what right. it was That's before. That's correct, because so they realized, you know, yeah. that, that the plan was too rich. Yep. And so they're making changes. You know, one of the things that I always say is, you know, they always forget to consult with me. That's the government when it comes to taxes, too. <laughs> Forgot to consult with me. I think the big mistake that they made in 2001 was when they grandfathered everybody in, they should have said, if you worked for five years under the 2.5% plan and 25 years under the 2% plan, Calculate then gosh that. darn it, they should have said 25 times 2, 5 times 2.5. Yep. But they didn't ask you. Yeah, they forgot to consult with me. And look at what they're having to do. All the new people are getting. Yeah, at least it works out for the teachers That's and the right. employees. Hey, you know what? It's still a good plan. Okay. Yes. And, you know, one of the things, I'm going to wrap up here. Um, one of the things that do not underestimate the value of a pension. Yep. My goodness, Absolutely. the value of pensions, especially since they're so few and far between anymore. You know, we talked yep. about it in the earlier segment. You know, it. it they're just so few and far between. One of the few forms of guaranteed income that exists still. Right, on top of Social Security, and it makes yep. you eligible for Social Security as well. Yes, it does. And so when you retire, you've got a potload of money. However, as a completely uh, separate side note that we should talk about in next week's episode mm -hmm. is the what do you do from a financial planning perspective for those people who have pensions and social security which we'll touch upon but yep. what we're going to do is we're going to come back for the next episode is going to be talking about following up and picking up where we are we knew that we didn't want to rush through this because this is very important and potentially complex and a lot of material to go through what we're going to do is spend a little bit more time going over a statement okay now the statement is not it, pick apart the statement a little bit but it's really designed to provide us with opportunity to discuss it more so thank you for joining thanks kyle for participating even though only gave you a couple sentences here <laughs> That's there. Right, but definitions. anyway so um thank you for joining us i look forward to catching up with you on the ne next episode to discuss it and thank you again i'm mike Menninger, kyle ryan from financial planning explained you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week